Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is move to location. Let me go and run my quick little example here. When I hit play, we have our little guy. He runs over and he stops at me. You'll actually see a small little issue there. When he repeats, you'll notice once I move out of the way, he will continue moving. If we look at the top left, it'll say whether we've been successful on moving or not. So we are using the move to location node. This is part of the navigation system and it's using the AI controller in order to move. Let me go ahead and pull up the node itself somewhere where I have some room. And you'll notice it when you type in move to location, it's, well, it's not going to come up. That's one thing. You have your simple move to location and that's going to use your navigation system and it's not going to require anything special. It's a basic move to. And then you have things like your new task, move to location or actor. The move to location is actually under move to location with the target of AI controller. And if you're not pulling it off of AI controller, so that's why unchecked context sensitivity, you're not going to find it. So let's look at the default version of it. It's pretty simple. Here is the simple move to location node. And here is the full move to location node. You'll notice quite a difference. Simple move to simply takes in your controller and a goal. The move to location actually takes in an AI controller reference. So it's different. It actually will only run with an AI controller. This will run off of a regular controller. And you have your destination, which is going to be a location, just simply somewhere in your world. Everything else here are optional settings that you can use to fine tune. And your biggest difference here is you actually have a return value letting you know what happened. Did it successfully find a path? Or did it fail because it couldn't get to the location? So let's go ahead and look at the node. We have our acceptable radius. This one's pretty simple. How far away do we need to be before we consider we finished? We were successful. Stop on overlap. You have your pawn. In this case, it's going to be my enemy. Your pawn has a physical size. It has a radius that is... A, it, it's the radius. If we were to look at my generic AI character here, it's this radius of the capsule here. If we're using the stop on overlap, it's basically going to add the pawn's radius to the acceptable radius. So in this case, because we have this checked and we have this as negative one, it's going to take the radius of my capsule component, which is going to be 34. And I got to stop clicking on the wrong things. And it's going to add that to my acceptable radius. So basically, as long as we're within 33, that's when it's going to call the stop. Use pathfinding. I'll show you in a second. Basically, it's whether or not it should use the pathfinding on the navigation mesh or if it should just go straight to the target. Project destination navigation. Basically, it's going to project it onto the navigation mesh. And it's useful for debugging purposes. Can strafe is pretty simple. Your character, when it's moving, is forward or turning and moving forward. Strafing is your left and right strafe movement. And it's whether or not you allow your AI, when it's trying to get to my target, to maybe go forward and strafe around a corner. It gives it a little bit more smoother motion, but it's up to your desires. Filter class pulls up a navigation query. These are more advanced topics. If you have some navigation filters for your pathfinding, you can fill them in here. And then allow partial path is basically go as far as you can if you cannot go completely to your target. If you have a partial path, it's acceptable. Try to get as close as you can. So let's look at this in use. I've got all the default settings. And when we run it, you'll notice our character moves around and stops. And you'll notice that they're not exactly going to the exact location. My character is stopping them because my character's radius. So that's why they nudge forward a little bit. If we were to adjust our acceptance radiance to something like 30 and hit play, you'll notice they're going to stop a little bit farther away and we're not going to have too much of an issue. Stop on overlap. Let me uncheck that. We'll hit play. We'll run through and you'll notice our character kind of pushes us out of the way. Use pathfinding. Now if you watch what happens 
when I hit play, you'll notice the AI goes directly towards me and kind of, well, in the case of this, because of this area here, this wall, he's not going to be able to get to the location because the wall's in the way and he doesn't know how to use pathfinding or the proper navigation. If we were to put that back on, whoops, pathfinding, there we go, and run it, now you'll notice he can properly go around any obstacles. Can strafe is whether he can strafe. We discussed that. He's going to turn around the corner, as you noticed there. If you noticed, he went straight forward, turned, and then went forward again. Can strafe means he's going to go ahead and basically slide across and come to me. Filter class we're not using, and then allow partial path we really don't need because I have full paths to get to the target. Now, one of the biggest differences, like I mentioned, is we have a return value here. This is going to give us a e path following request result, long name, enum return value, which as you can see here I'm printing out. On the top left you can see request successful. You'll see it again, request successful. And then when I jump across to my non-navigatable part, you'll see failed. So you can use that to determine if you should be doing anything based on your return, if you could actually move properly. Our previous simple move does not have a return type, so it basically fires and forgets. Now this one does fire and forget, but the biggest difference is you can actually do something based on if it could properly path. On this one you'd have to actually check and see if it was moving or if it had the ability to path, and you have to do a bunch of things like that. So that's your biggest issues on there. So that is going to wrap up our move to location node. Remember, it is just a more advanced version of our simple move to location. We have the ability to return back a value if we were successful or not, and it can take in some more options so you can fine tune. Keep in mind, it does take in our AI controller as a target. So in this case, what I did, because this is inside of our character, is I said, hey, go ahead and get a reference to yourself or our character, and then get the AI controller that our character is using. In this case, it's going to be my generic AI controller, which I've already set up. And then it's going to feed that in as the target. So the move to location talks to the AI controller and sets up the navigation and pathfinding.